for those of you that are able to would like to, would you stand and we'll pray. So Lord, we thank you so much that your presence is here. We thank you that you are with us at all times and in all things. But we pray now that as we come to encounter you, that, that your presence would draw nearer, that we'll be more aware of your presence. We come with uh, celebration on our hearts, but we also come with challenges and struggles, and we bring everything before you as we worship you in spirit and truth. And we thank you that as we come to give you all honour and glory, that you come and you meet with us. And we love you, and we honour you in Jesus' name. Amen.
is growing. We are longing for your kingdom to come. All creation, all of heaven, join their voices as one. Sing it, God, let your kingdom come. Your will be done. Let your kingdom come. God, let your kingdom come. May your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Earth is growing. Earth is growing. We are longing for your kingdom to come.
It's so good to share communion together again, isn't it? Yeah. In an adventurous and innovative way. <laughs> I hope that was okay for you. We just kind of, we work with what we can in these new times. It's really interesting to do that. So, um, as it's our once at the vineyard, we have to have a few notices. So, um, firstly, um, actually, yeah, I just mentioned, uh, we have the, the reach out, um, Street Survey team is meeting again on Tuesday, meeting at Wellerspoons at 10 o'clock to pray, and then some of the team will be out going and um, just meeting up with people on the streets and asking them questions about faith and what they're interested with, just in an easy way to start a conversation. And what they're going to be doing following that is inviting them to the Curry and Conversation, which will be on Thursday 24th in the evening at, is it at 7? 6.30, okay? Um, so basically the idea is that we provide uh, an easy place for people to come and ask a few more questions. Um, it's that kind of, you know, the, the time between times, between I'm interested in faith, I'm interested in having, asking some questions, but coming to church might be a big step, so let's take a small step. And also we'll offer them a free curry and a drink to go with it as well. So that's all we win, really. Um, if you are interested in joining in, do have a chat to Richard and Jenny who can give us a wave. The lovely Richard and Jenny over there, thank you very much. And um, so if you can um, have a chat with them if you're interested in joining in, um, or even actually if you're interested in knowing what's going on and praying for them as they go out. If maybe you're not free on a Tuesday morning, but we can all pray wherever we are, can't we? So have a word with them, that would be great. Um, our next notice is, just wanted to give you an update. We took a collection last week um, for uh, fund to help those in Ukraine. It's, um, we have connections with the, the vineyard in Ukraine, they have three churches, and they also have a, um, uh, a ministry because of Wide Awake International, which is helping uh, disabled orphans um, and supporting them. So we have given a phenomenal amount of over two and a half thousand pounds, which we are so grateful for all of your generosity. If anybody uh, wasn't here and still wants to give, you can find um, the information on our website. Um, and it's, um, it's dead easy to give. You can just drop an email to giving at harrogatvineyard.org.uk and let us know. And you can either uh, make a bank transfer or give us a check. So, um, but we are just blown away by how generous you are. And we know that they are so thankful for everything you give. And finally, if, um, if you're new here, uh, we do have a form you can fill in, helpfully titled, I'm new here. 
Um, so this is just to give us some details um, of who you are and if you'd like us to keep in touch with you, just to let you know what we're up to, we can you know, we drop out an email most weeks, just keeping people up to date with events and what we're doing. Um, there should be on the tables a little booklet again, and just say welcome and say who we are, what we're doing. And finally, we also have some free CDs to take away. There's a, there's a few we have here on sale, but these ones, the ones that say welcome on, are free. So please do take it away. It's got a few songs that uh, the Vineyard Records have created and some of the ones that we do at church. So you're very welcome to take all of those away and fill them in and return as you wish. I believe that's been done. I think I've got through without Maggie doing the bailout. <laughs> Just because occasionally when I've got a microphone I want to go off on a slight right chair, but I'm going to hold back. I'm stopping there. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a quick two minute break so that um, parents can go and sign their kids in um, in Vineyard Kids, go down the corridor, follow the signs, and um, it also gives you the opportunity to top up your coffee and grab another donut or a pastry or some fruit or a gluten-free cookie. So um, we'll be back here in just a couple of minutes for Emma to preach. Thank you. Morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name's Emma, um, and it's great to be here this morning. I do feel a bit like I'm running on pure adrenaline and caffeine, actually. <laughs> <laughs> after not much sleep, having a three-year-old to look after, but, you know, mm. I only had it for one night, so <laughs> I'm sure I know. Um, so it's really lovely to be here and see you all and to have this opportunity to talk today. Um, oh, yeah, get the kick around. Um, I want to start today's talk with a really great quote I saw online recently by an author called Matt Hay. Um, which I'm just going to read to you now. The world is increasingly designed to depress us. Happiness isn't very good for the economy. If we were happy with what we had, why would we need more? How do you sell an anti-aging moisturiser? You make someone worry about ageing. How do you get people to vote for a political party? You make them worry about immigration. How do you get them to buy insurance by making them worry about everything? How do you get them to have plastic surgery by highlighting their physical flaws? How do you get them to watch a TV show by making them worry about missing out? How do you get them to buy a new smartphone by making them feel like they're being left behind? To become calm, sorry, to be calm becomes a kind of revolutionary act. To be happy with your own non-upgraded existence, to be comfortable with our messy human selves would not be good for business. I really love this quote. I think it gives a real insight into what we're living in today's society and why many of us feel discouraged. Even as a Christian, it's very hard not to get sucked into the general void of general discouragement that everyone, it seems, is feeling. A book written 40 years ago by David Watson called Discipleship talks about the current spiritual, sorry, the current spiritual bankruptcy of the materialistic society at that time. And that was 40 years ago. David wrote that a mood of resigned apathy and despair has settled over much of our world. And that was before COVID, before things happening in today's society. Um, I've just clicked on too quickly, never mind. Um, people everywhere feel, as David puts it, the meanings, meaningless muddle of their present existence. Christians are not immune to depression, anger or frustration. I'm sure that many of you can remember a time when you felt discouraged. It might have been on the way here this morning, it might have been last month, or maybe you've not felt discouraged for a long time. I personally think that discouragement comes from a build-up of worry, anxiety, distress and fear over a long time. That's my personal view of it. I think it, you don't just suddenly become discouraged, I think it builds up. It may be that you don't recognise discouragement in you as such. It might manifest itself as something else. It might be stress, depression, avoidance, anger, fear. But often underlying all these emotions, discouragement will probably be there somewhere at the root of it. When I first got told what the topic of today's talk was, which um, is actually about encouragement, if you're confused, I felt reasonably positive about it. I was in 
a good place, the sun was shining, things were going well. I was like, oh yes, I'm, yes, I'm really encouraged, I can do this. <laughs> and it didn't feel like a particularly challenging topic to talk on. Um, fast forward a few weeks to when I actually had to write the actual talk. <laughs> it was like I was given the biggest challenge in my working life and all these different things were happening. Um, it felt like I'd been bombarded with the state of the world and the news and things going on. Felt um, politically, environmentally, culturally. Friends were struggling with various health and personal crises. I had COVID, was feeling a bit under the weather, I was trying to manage a challenging caseload. Um, with my job as a social worker and going through, who are going through some of the most personal difficult circumstances themselves. And I was feeling that I was being faced with a lack of resources and an inability to help alleviate their suffering. All of this meant that I was pushed to my limits in terms of feeling helpless and defeated by life. So I was definitely discouraged. <laughs> and there's been times since then that I have with the war and things happening in Ukraine, it's been very discouraging. I felt, you know, a bit helpless really. So this slide here, um, which I went to a bit prematurely, um, encourage comes from the old French, which is encourage. Um, uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> oh yeah, my degree in France with France, French has suddenly come through, you know, <laughs> 30 years later. Um, so the on is put in or with and courage, which is strength, heart, enthusiasm. Um, so if you think about it, it's uh, with courage, which you don't often think about as encourage being that really, although it's pretty obvious when you think about it. And Conversely, discourage without strength or without heart, without courage. Interestingly as well, the Greek word for encouragement is paraklesis, and the Greek word for the Holy Spirit is parakletos, very similar. The para part of this word means alongside, and the kletos klesis means called or called. So you could literally think of encourage as being the Holy Spirit alongside us or the calling, cheering voice, urging us on. So it's a different way to think of, it, of being encouraged. So the God reminds us repeatedly in the Bible, there go, um, not to be anxious or discouraged. So it's something that he knows that we struggle with. Um, in Philippians 4 verse 6, do not be anxious about anything. In 1 Chronicles 28 20, it says, Be strong and courageous and do the work. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord God, my God, is with you. He will not fail you or forsake you until all the works of the service of the, of the Lord is finished. Joshua 1 verse 9, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I wonder why God reminds us of this repeatedly in the Bible. Jesus knew in this life it would not always be smooth running, and Jesus knew how easy it would be for our trust and faith in him to get beaten down by the battles we face. These aren't the easy times we're living in, and God did prepare us for this in the Bible. Jesus talks to his disciples about the end times on a number of occasions in the New Testament. In Luke 21, he talks about nations being in anguish, people will faint in terror, and there will be perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. I'm sure some of you can relate to this metaphoric description of the world we're living in now. We don't know whether we're in the end times or not, but what we do know is that that is where ultimately the world is heading. But he reminds us, when these things begin to play, take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. None of us know how long these end times will last or how many will come again, but advise us to be careful and be always on the watch. Jesus always gives us something to encourage us. In John 16, I've chosen the Amplified Version here as I think it just gets across the message a bit better. He reminds us that he's telling us these things so that we will have perfect peace. Yes, we will have tribulation and distress, but be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, undaunted, be filled with joy, for I have overcome the world. If you think about it, our minds and thoughts are rich pickings for Satan, an easy way for the enemy to get inside our heads and drag us down. I read recently that the heaviest burdens 
we carry other thoughts in our heads. If you imagine courage being like a bubble wrap around us, the enemy can get a tiny crack in our courage and rip it apart from us by getting into our thoughts and feelings. Discouragement happens a little at a time. So where do we find encouragement? We can find encouragement in way, many ways. After praying during my particularly challenging week a few weeks ago, um, I was praying for some motivation and encouragement to get through it. And God used somebody I worked with to show me that I was in fact making a difference on a very difficult case that I was working on, on that difficult week. <laughs> Someone who was in high standing on the case praised my intervention and it meant the world to me to be acknowledged and be uplifted and to be uplifted in that. And it was so encouraging. It brought me to tears. And I think that's the fact that God does use different people and different situations to encourage us. It's not always directly from God. He can use other people to do that. But the best encouragement for me is that which brings me back to God and his plans for my life and my purpose in it. Of, God, of course, God uses other people to encourage and inspire us, but we can't always rely on that. We don't always need to look far, too far in the Bible for stories that encourage and amaze us. Nearly every person mentioned in the Bible has experienced despair and desperation at some point and is a testimony to God's grace and provision. God tells us to look to him, to pray about everything and give praise and thanks to him. He's not just telling us to just forget it or don't worry about it like a friend might do, offhand kind of thing. He promises to give us peace that will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It's not a quick fix to have that total peace about who you are, what you're doing and where you're going. You need to have peace about the circumstances you're in. Only the peace of God can do this. And we need to seek that through his word, in prayer, in praise and worship. There are also many books written by Christians who talk about how God has worked and moved through their lives to bring about his purposes. A great example of this is John Kirkby, who set up Christians Against Poverty, otherwise known as CAP, where Nick G works. His book, nevertheless, is basically a book of his diary entries over an incredible time in his life, where he went from being an absolutely broken man, having lost everything, to having to utterly depend on God day by day in order to see God's vision through and bring it to fruition. And that wasn't just for CAP, it was for his own personal circumstances. There's a section in the book where he talks about reading through verses from the Bible that have been spoken over him or that God has laid on his heart for Cap. I just want to read a bit from it now. So he writes, The word of God has both sustained and encouraged us. I would often spend time with God asking him for advice and encouragement. I would read daily devotionals and listen to all the preachers. Whenever I felt in my spirit that a word was specifically for me or Cap, I noted it. The words of encouragement I received through the Bible stand as a testimony to God's amazing grace. Without his faithless, sorry, faithfulness and miraculous provision in terms of strength, determination and sheer will to go on, we would have crumbled. He talks about carrying on regardless through very, very difficult, challenging times. It may be that we have to align ourselves with God and understand our duty to dine to ourselves. Paul, one of Jesus' disciples, who was well known for being resolute in his faith despite suffering endless attacks on him, Paul really knew about having to die to self. He accepted the pain of suffering for following Jesus. Twice in 2 Corinthians 4, he said, do not lose heart. He talked about emotions such as being afflicted, persecu per perplexed, persecuted, and struck down. Paul was very aware of the immense privilege of Christian ministry, as well as having a strong hope in the future glory. I love these, ver these verses in Corinthians. Therefore, we do not lose heart, 
Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes on not, not on what is seen, but what, on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Remembering that God's purposes and plan may be different to ours, we may, to, we may need to align ourselves to God's plan. This is often a daily ritual practice of laying our lives down. People need to help us along the way. Paul was greatly encouraged when he saw people encouraging and caring for each other. In Philippians 1, he wrote to the early churches he helped establish and said, Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. He understood that encouragement was needed and essential to the building up of the early church in particular. Jeremy Riddle, who's a Christian singer, who you're actually going to hear sing in a bit, recently tweeted, Encouragement is like oxygen to the human spirit. Don't forget you're carrying someone's air. Encourage them, help them to breathe. So how do we encourage each other? We mentally support, we give hope, we build someone up, we share, um, we give them courage, encouragement is strengthening, share our experiences and wisdom, we empower people, we offer forgiveness and a second chance to those who stumble, we come alongside and lend our strength to those who falter. In other words, give them some oxygen, help them breathe. The best encouragement makes us look to God. Some encouragement can be quite self-centered and about doing things in our own strength, such as hang in there, you can do it, people might say these things, it's all to do with what we can do. But actually the best encouragement leads us to look to God, our strength, our deliverer, and our comforter as we come to him. As Matt puts it, Matt Payne puts it, our messy human selves. As we reminded earlier, we have to look at the bigger perspective than what is happening to us here on earth. C.S. Lewis calls it a continual looking forward to the eternal world, living with this hope. One of the things a Christian is meant to do, looking forward to the eternal hope, but it's often so hard to do. It is very difficult and countercultural to go against the general negativity, cynicism of society, the gloom and doom going on. How many of us do this in our lives without even thinking, or are thinking about the impacts of, on others as well? So it's important to not only have this hope, but pass this hope on to others. Whether that's building up others within the church or amongst our Christian friends, or building up those who don't even know him yet. Let's be an encourager in a world where everyone is quick to criticize and condemn, or moan, worry, spread fear, and let our mouths speak differently. In a minute, we're going to listen to, um, or sing along if you want to, um, an old hymn, another old hymn we've, had, uh, we've been treated today, <laughs> um, called Blessed Assurance. The words of this hymn are so beautiful, um, were written by Fanny Crosby, who actually wrote um, a brief reflection on during lockdown, because I really got into some of the old hymns. Um, it was written in 1873, and Fanny found such rest for her soul, despite being blind and having suffered great loss in her life. Some of the words in the song are, perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my saviour, and am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song. And it's just so simple really, because that is essentially what your faith is, isn't it? You're watching and waiting and looking above, and you're keeping everything in perspective. The reason I chose this song is it kept coming back to me time and time again. When I was planning this talk, it was a song that kept going around like on a loop. <laughs> Um, and I feel it really sums up the essential element of why we follow Jesus and reminding us to keep looking up so that we can live out our individual story and song despite our personal, all the world's circumstances. 
I'd like you to reflect on this hymn uh, while it's playing, or where you might feel discouraged yourself and have hardened your heart. Maybe you have a word of encouragement for somebody, and it might be appropriate for you to, to share that, it might be someone sat near you, and it'd be great if you could do that. Um, it might be in the week you might feel encouraged to just give a little blessing to somebody, a text, a phone call, send them something in the post, that kind of thing. Let's give each other the oxygen we need to breathe.
So we pray, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. We love your presence is here and we acknowledge you and we invite you into our hearts, into our lives, into the bits that we hide from other people. Where we need encouragement, where we're feeling flat and despondent, overwhelmed, sad. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come in come alongside and to bring your encouragement once again. Help us to look up, to look up to the rock that is higher than we are. Help us to look up and to acknowledge the Lord who is above all, who knows all and who loves all. So maybe as you just sit in God's presence, maybe situations or people come to mind. Lord, for each and every person that we are praying for this morning, whether it is a nation or an individual, we pray, come Holy Spirit. Bring your encouragement. Wherever those people are right now, May they feel a sudden strengthening in their hearts and minds. A determination to look up to you, Lord, and to keep going. And if it is you this morning who needs that bit of encouragement, then I pray, Holy Spirit, would you speak to each person, remind them of their worth. And may you know the Lord's blessing today and all your days. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Emma. That's just really touched a place I think all of us have been in recently where we need to remember that encouragement of God and to encourage one another. So as we finish this morning and as we set down, take the time to encourage one another. Nick was speaking last week about us being generous with our words. And... Um, Let's do that. And, but the difficulty with that is we also have to be people who can accept it. So, yeah, there's the thing. So when some, if someone sends you a bit of encouragement, don't just bat it away or do that thing of, oh, no, 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 just thank you. And let it sit in your spirit and, and receive the encouragement from God. Because sometimes I think we kind of go, yeah, no. But God wants to encourage us and he wants to encourage you. So just as we're setting down, just be encouraging. Amen. Right then. That's been lovely. We're going to go and get the kids and we're going to pack up. Take care and we'll see you next time.